Welcome to And Performance. This is a new series made by Mount View exploring the MA Performance Programme. My name is Dr. Joe Parslow and I'm an MA tutor at Mount View. I work primarily on the MA Performance Acting and Musical Theatre strands and I'm also a researcher with a focus on queer performance and queer communities, as well as being a producer of drag performance events and nightlife in London. In these talks, we're going to um, have conversations with graduates of the MA Performance Programme, and I'm going to ask them questions about their experiences on the course, what they've done since graduating, and all of these sort of things. On the MA Performance, as long, alongside the programme leaders, uh, Cheryl Gow and Merrin Owen, I'm really interested in how training in acting and musical theatre can be complemented by rigorous and critical engagements with theory. Um, on the creative project unit, which I work on in particular, students engage with uh, practice research projects where they create a specific presentation or performance which is grounded by research. So these can range from performance lectures through to workshops, through to autobiographical performances and drag shows and sort of everything in between. Uh, and students gain an experience of making their own work as well as conducting research at master's level. Today, we are gonna be thinking about politics, play and performance. And I'm really excited to be joined by Gratia Rios and Mariana Lafon. Um, I'm gonna do bios now so you get the joy of, of me uh, talking about you. So. Uh, uh, Mariana is an actress and producer. She received an MA in performance acting from Mount View, as well as a BA in theatre and acting from Anahuac University in Mexico. She is the writer, director, performer and producer of her most recent work, Shaken, um, which explores the aftermath of two devastating earthquakes that hit Mexico City in 1985 and 2017. Shaken premiered in November 2020 as part of the Latin American season curated by Untold Collective and in association with the Actors Centre and returned to the Actors Centre, the Actors Centre's Theatre On Demand platform in 2021. Gracia was born in Malaga. After working for various theatre companies, she moved to London to complete an MA in musical theatre at Mount View. Um, while studying at Mount View, she created The Lesson, which has been performed in London as part of the speech festival and again at the Old Red Lion Theatre. During the pandemic she performed the lesson for Spanish platform Proyecto Impulso and also at the Brighton Fringe Festival. Welcome both of you and thank you so much for coming to talk to me today. So. Thank you so much for having us. Yes. Great. Oh, it's really nice to be in a room together. It feels like, uh, yeah, it's 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 amazing how quickly the time flies by. It's been a couple of years already, and that feels that feels crazy. <laughs> crazy. And so much has happened since then, which is yeah, interesting. And we'll cover some of this today. We're going to spend a bit of time. I've got kind of three main things I want to talk about, but inevitably we're going to end up talking about other things as well. I guess what I'm interested to start with is that. All of the work, so we talked mostly about kind of the work, your kind of self-created work and uh, that, that you've both been engaging in. And I guess for me, all of that, both of your work kind of really is connected to gender, ideas of gender and gender theory and, and feminism and, and feminist theory as well. And I guess, and feminist performance practices in particular. And I'd be interested maybe just to hear you both talk a little bit more about how you encountered these ideas and how they influenced the type of performances you wanted to make or that you've made. Can we, shall I just pick or does anyone want to start? Um, I can start if that's, if that's all right. Yeah, I remember, well, Cheryl gave me lots of books to be honest, <laughs> but I remember one that was really good for my MA project, which was, um, Feminist Snap from Sarah Hammett. And she talks about snapping, but in a feminist way. She used the concept as a tool to break with a system that is oppressing you some, some, some way. And she, she talks about feminism, so it's more like women being oppressed in a system and you snap against that in order to change things. And also I got a connection with Brech in the sense that she talk, he, he talks about uh, using theater to, to change society because so society is something you can change. You have the power to, to change. So yeah, well, in my case, I was talking about sexual abuse. So it was a feminist theme mostly. Yeah. 
I don't know if Mariana wants to add anything. Yes, of course. I actually find your the, the snap thing very interesting in relation to, in relation to my project because I think both events, uh, 1985 and 2017, the earthquakes were like a snap for Mexican society. It was a, a realization that there was an oppressive system and a, on a very um, non-responsive government or lack of response. Um, in my theory, I use Judith Butler and she talks about specifically in this essay about grief and how grief makes us vulnerable. But if we deny that vulnerability, then we don't have that possibility of community, of building community. Um, I think this applies to feminism in a way that um, a lot of cases, mostly in Mexico, there are a lot of um, killings of women every day. I think it's uh, nine women that die every day uh, because of violence. And um, it just, it's, a, it's an issue of, about education and culture and how men think they have the power to oppress women. And I think that is, um, it goes from an individual case of like one man um, per, um, like violating a woman to a state, like a government violating its people. So it's like, it, it goes from a, a, the home to the government. And that's what I find impressive and just very serious and something we have to talk about. So yes, uh, historic events and little, um, it may seem like it's just one earthquake, you know, or one news or, one violation, but it's that thing that makes you snap and find that political rage, that rage inside you that makes you realize that you're not comfortable with things and how governments work and how society works. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, it's really fascinating. I think that sense of, like both of you kind of starting from these snapping moments or finding these snapping moments are really, are really, um, interesting in part because for both of you those snapping moments also happened years and years and years before that that there also a sense of 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 that snap was happening in the moment for you but also re like both in both when you're talking about historic cases are happening decades you know in your case uh, like be before and so i'm interested uh, there's something really interesting in in i guess this is a bit beside but both of you are kind of bridging the personal and the political in really in really fascinating ways and I wondered with that because you're also both dealing with really complex and, and difficult topics how did you start to approach that in your work like what was it like dealing with that personal in response to the political do you want to start Mariana <laughs> yeah it I I started realizing that this was a problem because I found I think I was reading Judith Butler work but but really it was the the realization that one case of one it, one thing was similar to one thing in 2017 sorry was similar to one in in 1985 and it was this case uh, of a little girl that was trapped under the co a collapsed school called Colegio Reptamen so they were looking for her for days and days and everyone was very worried about that little girl but nobody really knew who she was um so the media the media uh grabbed this story and they were selling us this story day and night day and night kind of uh like a telenovela you know like it, they were just feeding us that news as and they were um kind of manipulating society um with emotion and um, th obviously at the end, when they finished looking for people that were uh, under the, the, that collapsed school, they didn't find this girl because this girl never existed. And this same thing happened in 1985 with a, with a little boy named Mochito. Same thing, all the newspapers talked about him and at the end he didn't even exist. So I realized the manipulation of, of media 
that comes actually from the government, you know, and this is an issue we've been living for years. And every time there's a big and tragic event, it's like a, a strategy to, to, um, yeah, to, to move our attention from the real issue into something emotional and something like, uh, yeah, like I'm telenovela. I don't know how to say this, but yeah, it's the government kind of manipulating media and silencing, silencing the voices that have to be heard. And that really made me angry. It made me so, so angry. So that was like the, the starting point. And I guess I just want to I just want to end this uh, argument with with this idea. Talking about memory. The stages of memory would begin with an event that transforms society, which causes a traumatic effect. Then there would come a phase of repression or suppression, which will sooner or later be followed by an inedible anamnesis, the return of the repressed, and which can sometimes lead to memorial obsession. That's it. So the importance of memory, collective memory. Mm -hmm. Yeah. In, in my case, uh, talking about uh, sex, sexual abuse and raping and rape, uh, for me, clown was my salvation to talk about it. Like, to be honest, I didn't know how to how to how to talk about that theme because it's such a hard and difficult thing to talk about. And it's usually silenced in most, most countries, at least in Spain and in Mexico, when I was talking with Mariana about it. And for me, Clown gave me the playfulness, the comedy, the humor, the sense of humor, dark, dark humor sometimes, to talk about this in a lighter way, I guess and make it easier for the audience to see really shocking images, but make them laugh about it. Yeah, yeah. And it's really interesting because I think both, you know, both those works and both is like a really, it's a really interesting way that, that as an audience, we're kind of implicated in, in, in your works, like really politically, because we, you know, like particularly I remember with Graffi when I first watched yours, you kind of laugh, 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 oh, God, I shouldn't be laughing at this, you know. That moment is a really important and also a really exciting moment in performance of like, oh, okay, this is what I'm doing. And with Mariana, I remember thinking with, with your work that, you know, when you're talking about the, the memorialization as both a positive thing and a negative thing, that you are really treading that line between how the ways in which you kind of are, are, are kind of adding to this archive of trauma, but also finding new a new voice to it and finding new ways to navigate the complexities of that moment. And I think, you know, it's really interesting to to hear you talk about about kind of wanting to find new ways of telling these stories because I think that's one of the fascinating things is is how do you how do we have these conversations, which are difficult conversations, without without only adding to a traumatic conversation, but trying to affect change, trying to actually do what that snap is in some ways, which I think is kind of, that's the interesting thing. I might pull, I might, add, can we, I want to think actually a bit more about like the the theatre making bits of it. And, and I guess I'm interested in thinking about like the challenge in particular of the last year, like year or so of how both of you moved work online and, and I think for both of you your work relied on an audience initially I right? relied on a kind of initial response in the room or that's what it felt like and so that's why I was really fascinated to hear that both of you had kind of moved work online because in, in many ways I thought god those are the projects that I can't imagine without that kind of initial response and yet clearly they have they have they have kind of worked and then worked really successfully so I guess how have you approached moving work online and 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 what do you think has been different in, in negotiating that? Yeah, well, for me, it was like really crazy. As you know, the lesson needs audience. The audience is a very important part of the play. They are part of the play. They shape the play with me. And they help me talk about power dynamics. So without them, that doesn't work. So in my case, I did a very clever thing, which was record uh, professionally the lesson while when I did it at maiden speech and 
I just did it because I wanted to have some a, a good recording of the play just in case, but I never imagined that COVID would happen or anything like that. But at the end, I got in contact with this Spanish platform first, and they were trying to help young artists to get some money from, from their work. And I remember, oh God, I have this professional recording and I have never used it before. So I could use it now with some Spanish subtitles and sell it in Spain. And that's what I did. And, and actually it worked quite well because a lot of people from Spain wanted to see it and they couldn't go to London to see Maiden Speech. Um, yeah, but I needed, a, it needs to be pre-recorded because I cannot do the lesson on streaming without an audience. So at the moment I'm just dealing with this in that way and Brighton Fringe is going to be the same, it's going to be pre-recorded and hopefully do it again live soon. Yeah, yeah. Do you get a sense of like a different response when people are watching it on, online? And, and yeah I believe they feel safer because I'm not gonna take them I'm not going to do anything to them they are they are more relaxed in their yeah. houses watching like a film or something but actually a lot of people call me like crying and with that feeling of wow I felt I was in the theater but that's because in the in the recording there there, there is audience Mm -hmm. So I, I, I have the, the feeling that you have that sensation surrounding you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's really fascinating because you do, and Matt, like initially you do think that it's interesting that then the audience who are watching at home kind of see, are seeing, I know, thinking about memory, are seeing the archive of that performance, which is also about a kind of archive of something else. There's a really nice kind of layering up there. Do you think... Um, is there anything out? I mean, I'm just wondering, and this is not a useful question potentially, but like if you if you were gonna do it live over Zoom or something like that, do you think what do you think it would be possible? Do you think the kind of clowning element requires you to be with another human? For me, in, in doing the lesson, I feel I need audience. At the moment, I was uh, considering create another play, another clown play that I wanted to do. But because for me, the lesson needs people. They are, they are as important as me. It's like, if I don't show up, there is no play. But if they don't show up, I cannot do it either. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I don't know how could I do that. Yeah. yeah. Uh, but because of the power dynamics that they create at the beginning, and yeah, and all the shame they feel when we are talking about sex, and I want that to, to be shown. Yeah, yeah, interesting. All right. So, Mariana, I know you kind of, your work involved in a level of adaption as well to thinking about it. So, could you talk, I'd love to hear more about how, yeah, what that process was like for you. Yes. I wanted to add that um, the way I, I, I decided to start constructing shaking was uh, with breath theory, like epic theater, theater uh, epic theory. <laughs> Uh, theater and the uh, alienation and that obviously involves an audience and I wanted to provoke the audience and make them reflect about the event and kind of find the, the connection between um, between what what we lived as a, as a Mexican society in Mexico City at that time with an international audience and at that moment in the present. So uh, it's a bunch of contrasting and provoking scenes that I designed. And that was really helpful when adapting it to, to the camera because um, I, I chose a location. It, I didn't have it pre-recorded. Like I, I showed it at Mount View and then this opportunity uh, arised. So I, I decided to, to do the play and record it, but I didn't. I never had audience to outside of Mount View. So it was interesting because it was uh, kind of designed for the camera. I took out some of the parts that involved audience participation because I didn't have the, the audience. I, I made it more like breaking the fourth wall, but in, in for the camera. So direct uh, addressing them directly 
and all, almost all the monologues and all the oh, um, characters talk to the audience directly. Um, I, I, as I told you, I, I took out some scenes, but I also added one scene that I really wanted to do when I was um, at Mount View, but I, I wasn't brave enough to do it. I don't know why it involves singing and singing is, it just puts you in a very vulnerable place. And I, I don't know, I wasn't like brave enough, but it's a scene in honor of um, all those mothers that had their children in 85 and the one of the hospitals here in Mexico City collapsed. So a lot of babies were still trapped and uh, the rescuers heard a voice, heard a, uh, someone crying and they realized that there were a, a couple of babies still alive after seven days after the quake. So they are called miracle babies. There are about 14 babies that they found like a week after the earthquake. And it's a scene about a mother that is singing to uh, her child and kind of uses her own body to protect that child. And uh, this same thing, like this thing, I think it happened in Japan. So here you find the connection between um, this event and other cultures. It's a point of connection that makes you realize that we can all relate to grief, to loss, to tra human tragedy. Um, I think that's the strength of Shaken. And that message came through even, even as in this new format, because I don't think it's theater and I don't think it's like a short film is a hybrid like a, a, a mix of the two um I called friends that knew about cinema that have the cameras that have the lights I couldn't have done it without them so if if this is a new way of doing theater I would advise everyone to just know a little bit about cinema just uh, any like the basics of lighting and, and you know and frames, just the basics. Uh, it was not. It was it was the the response was great, and as I told you, I think the message went through. Uh, like it, it, people understood what I wanted to say, but I do miss the audience. Like I did me miss that energy and that um, constant communication and exchange of thoughts because when I was doing it with with audience I could see your reactions and I could see what you were thinking obviously when I just put the product out not just the the play I, I don't know I've I've uh, received some great messages from people mostly my audience is mostly focused on Mexico like that's what I realized I I'm, I am talking directly to my people. Obviously, other uh, people from other countries saw the play, but um, I think it, it, it's, it's so important that Mexican people watch it. Um, but yes, people telling me that they thought about their brother that is not here anymore, uh, that they thought about when they lived through that situation, that they thought about someone they lost or um, they found the relationship with things that we're living right now. Uh, a couple of weeks ago, we had a, a, a tragedy in the city. One line, the metro uh, collapsed. And uh, uh, I think 20, 20, I don't know, 24, or 26 people died. And, and it just, it's again, that snap or of, uh, I'm paying my, my taxes. I'm I'm doing my the right thing, you know. I am I am behaving as a good civilian. Like I'm doing everything. Why doesn't my government respond? Like why doesn't someone check the metro? Like it's just you know it's public transport. It has to be safe. It's not it's not in question. Like we're not debating about it. It just has to be safe. And it's incredible that a lot of people said this line is not safe uh this line has cracks it has damage it's damaged check it and nobody checked it 
and they knew about this line. It was damaged from the very start and they started building it. But the problem is that because of corruption, people just want to save money in construction and they don't want to, you know, like spend the money so they can take it from for themselves. And that is corruption. And the consequences of corruption are death, death, people dying when they're on their way to their home after a very long day of work. And that's the same thing like in the earthquakes, you're at home or you're at work and your building or your house collapses because, because someone wanted a little bit of money. You know, I'm like, it's just, I don't know. It, 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 it's that important snap that, that makes you want to talk and want to wanna move and go out on the streets. And I think that's some, something that Colombia is living right now. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. It's a, like a story of violence and oppression that is just exploding right now. And that is for Latin American in general. It's a long history of oppression and we're still not having the governments we deserve. So yeah, I think it's important to do all those um, adaptations of art. If, if, if people cannot go to the theater or to the cinema or to the street, it's important to keep adapting as a creator because, yeah. and, and I want to read something out, out loud and I then I will shut up. <laughs> uh, so I'm d- I'm, it's linked to everything I'm saying. So the media uh, were heavily controlled by the government. Faced with this, the participants in the in this movement devised various communication strategies to keep talking about this event. And this is what it's important. It is very possible that its dissemination and the knowledge that different sectors of the population may have of this historical event passes more through alternative channels, oral and family transmission, films, novels, documentaries, than through a history station, or I don't know how to say that exactly, that is transmitted by official means. And that means by the school, you know, that it's on the history text. So why is it important to do this plays and adaptations of some historical events? Because maybe, the government or um, the official, I don't know, media, newspapers, books, everything, they will not talk about this event and the the truth behind this event. So it's kind of the responsibility of an artist that has this type of, 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 I don't know, this uh, ideas or, or saying, I don't know, to, to do these performances in place, to keep the memory alive and bring the past to the present so we can talk and discuss and heal a, and, and plan a future. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And you know, one of the things I think is really important with, with, with that and, and with both of your work is that you're engaging in subject matters that are often dealt with by silence, by not talking about them, you know, in various different ways or by de- and silence as we, as we, you know, not, not speaking is a position exactly. of privilege, is a position of privilege in, in some way, right? Not speaking ha- is, a, is a, not having to speak is a position of privilege. Be, have, being a, and therefore speaking and speaking about these things is absolutely a political position to occupy. And I think that's true of both of your work, which is about how do we maintain visibility on these subjects? Because visibility is, is kind of, is power in, in many different ways. Yeah, think- and if you want to do a real revolution and you one change change is not silent and change is not peaceful change is violent revolutions have been violent so in mexico city they've been criticizing feminists for destroying monuments and and causing like chaos on the streets well yeah but why do you care about a monument 
but you don't care about a living person that is dying because of violence and is dying in a horrible way, horrible, horrible way. So what is the value you are putting in human life? Is it more worth it to preserve a monument, a building that a human life? I don't know. And that's kind of what, you know, what Butler Butler is coming up, up, up when she talks about which lives are grievable and, and all of those. And, and, exactly. You know, absolutely. Yeah. That, that, all of those. Things. All right. I want to, I'm just keeping on time, but I want to just talk a little bit. So one of the, the kind of the heading of today's talk is about politics and play. And Gratia, we talked a little bit about that already, but I want to kind of maybe ask you again. And and you, Mariana, about like there's a playfulness in your work as well. There's a there's there in both works, there's a there's moments where of lightness, I think Gratia explicitly obviously through through clowning, but the same in yours, Mariana, about the kind of dealing with these complex topics through playfulness and sometimes silliness and sometimes fun. And I wondered about what how you why and kind of how you developed that work and you talked a little bit about that Gathia, but I'd love to hear more about what that clowning did for you oh for for me uh well um it gave me innocence uh for the character because I wanted to present a uh, kind of like a kid going through what we have what we all did when we were teenagers like what sex how this works and the clown helped me to create a, a innocent and curious uh, character, which is navigating through different sketches. It doesn't have a lineal um, a continuity. The play doesn't go from a starting point to an end, like in the more conventional way. And it's just learning or not learning <laughs> things uh, about sex all the time and and having really bad sex education, then going through pornography to find out more, then starting to have relationships with others. And that's when violence and power dynamics appear because Spain is quite a sexist um, society. And what is with all this that Mariana is saying, about po politics and what comes to my mind is like, um, which, what is important is like, we have individual responsibility to change these things, but we not have the power to actually change these as individuals. So we need a political, we need political help. We need a system that helps us to develop, um, yeah, um, an education, uh, to change this. So, yeah, I don't know if this has to, anything to do with clown, to be honest, but yeah, um, what I wanted to say is, <laughs> um, oh God, for me, it's like, we need help from the people in power in order to, to create that system and stop this, these things from happening. And, probably what we need to do as artists is just open the discussion and start talking about it. And in my case, if clown helped me to do it, because I don't believe people is going to go to see a play about raping, if it's a drama and I tell, oh, it's going to be explicit and it's going to, it's going to be tr triggering for you or you are going to have a really bad time. I don't think people want to see that. And a lot of people, when they came to see the lesson, they didn't expect the ending. As you said, it was quite shocking, but you need to help people get into your world, into your imagination, into what you have created and be part of it. And when they feel they are, they are part of your play is when you can snap them and say, no, this is not funny. This is actually happening. See this, see this, see all this data. And um, yeah, and that's what clown made uh, to me. Yeah, mm -hmm. it's really interesting then to hear like the that that like the clown like vehicle getting people in, but then also that the snap then becomes a thing you're doing in the performance, not just a thing that led you to do the performance. That that's a really yeah, nice yeah. continuity that that comes all the way through. Great, excellent, uh, Mariana. Yes, uh, at first I wanted to 
to use games, Mexican games. Uh, in the play, I think it was the second scene, I used snakes and ladders. And that is a game I used to play when I was a little girl. And I used to play it like afterwards. It's just very fun. But I changed the dynamic, like the, the, the rules of the game. And instead of just falling in a, like just um, if, if, if you were in a, in a snake and you go down, but instead, like of, of having snakes, it was just concepts that I thought that were causing this this collapsing of of the ideas we had about Mexico, you know, and and society, kind of the the snapping thing that we're talking about. I like that word, by the way. And so, uh, what made you fall in that game was corrupt, corruptions, bad constructions, fraud, you know, and and what made you um, go up as a ladder was. Um, teamwork and solidarity, those kind of values that uh, were, uh, yeah, and um, um, yes, exactly. So that was the game and it, it, it was fun to play with the audience, of course. Um, then I had a scene when I, I wanted to use a kind of farce or comedy with the precedent. Um, we, we had a president in 85 that was not very responsive to the, to the event. He responded to society and to what was happening three days after the earthquake. <laughs> so I get, I, that makes me angry as well. So instead of just shouting at the sky, I wanted to make it fun, make it informative, of course, and use the actual words that he used but making it more as a, a dialogue with a volunteer and that volunteer is a puppet. I wanted it to be a puppet because of what it means um, that it is a puppet. I know it was weird, like a lot of reviewers were confused and <laughs> we're like, what is that puppet doing there? But it was fun to, to, to not um, sacrifice that idea when I was adapted into to film because I doubted myself. I was like, I know this is a random, uh, a strange object, but that's the idea of, I'm not saying that my play is Brechtian, but because it's not, but that's the idea he wanted to uh, preserve in his place. Just the strange thing, that strange element, that thing that takes you out of emotion, that confuses you a little bit. So you have to think. Um, so that puppet symbolizes uh, the, the civilian that is being manipulated or suppressed by the authority, the president. That's why it is a puppet. But it, it, it is a, a fun dialogue and, the, you know, like it uses humor to, to go through a really long scene, I have to say. Uh, <laughs> and then I use uh, Mexican traditional dance and Mexican music. The song I sing is an adaptation of a popular song here in Mexico that we tend to dedicate to our moms. That is why I use it in that particular scene. And um, I, I use that dance and that music and that other side of uh, that, those other perspectives of Mexico and, and of our tragic history to connect, to kind of talk about my culture, show it to the audience and, 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 and use other resource, resources and ways of presenting the same event. And it, just because as Gracia said with the lesson, it, it, they're not circular, they're, they're not linear place, they're circular. They're strategic, uh, episodic plot structures, right? So, by doing this, I'm presenting different situations, scenarios, and characters. We're giving different perspectives from the di from the same event, so you can really reflect on the event and kind of draw a conclusion of your own, and not like follow the hero, you know, like the the main character all the way through, um, because it's not the character we want to follow. It's the theme we want to follow, the lesson behind what we're trying to say and show. 
yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, really interesting. And I really like how, for both of you, those kind of playful, that playfulness is a, it's like a really purposeful strategy to communicate, right? And I think that that's really fascinating to kind of hear, hear that. It's really great to hear how, like, the ideas that you started of, started in, in your creative project are now kind of running through into your creative work after the MA and to see kind of how you're extending and challenging these things. And I think what was also really great and um, is, is that, like, whilst there are many negative things about COVID and the implications of moving online, that both, if in both cases, they've given you a chance to speak to the audiences that your work is about as well. And I think there's a really fascinating and important part of like the reach and access for the work that we can think about. We're going to have to start rounding up soon, but I've got, because we have been going, we're nearly, we're probably nearly close to want to finish to where we need to finish. But I want to ask two kind of broader questions, one about the past, one about the future. Just the first one, thinking about you and your time at Mountview is if you could send a message to yourself just before you started the MA at Mountview, at the MA performance, what would you say? <laughs> wow. It's going to be harder than you think, but it's going to be greater than you think. Just work as hard as you are going to do. Um, everything will be all right. Do the work. <laughs> do the work. That's a good one. Absolutely. Do the work. It's going to be worth it. You're going to learn so much about yourself, your country, where you come from, um, about your mates, you know, the people that are around you. I just enjoy every single day of it and um, kind of go into the practice sooner. <laughs> don't, uh, <laughs> that is something that Joe told yeah. me. Just stop yeah, don't with get... the research. Stop yeah. with the research. And I know I'm very intellectual. What I'm not saying I'm really intelligent. I'm saying that I'm really intellectual. So uh, I love the, the reading and reading and, and, and researching, but it's also very, very important to just go and lock yourself in one of the studios and just let yourself discover your own creative language. Um, that is very important because the play is not going to design itself. <laughs> you know, <laughs> you have to try and maybe, maybe, and just maybe. I was really shy about my work. Gracia wasn't. Uh, she showed me the lesson. I like, was really frightened. So she was frightened, but we, she was not shy about it, and uh, she did, she wasn't silent about it. She <laughs> wanted to to show it to people before her performance. I didn't show it to anyone before my performance. I would advise everyone to show it to the person you tr trust the most, just one or, or or two times before you present it, because you don't know how you, what you're creating is being read. Or, or can be interpreted. Mm. So just be brave enough to show your work. Yeah, and help each other. Yeah. 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 Nice. Thank you. Yeah, I'm gonna, gonna take a recording of getting the practice sooner and play that next year to all the people on the <laughs> um, Practice. <laughs> um, okay, last question then. We've talked about the past and thinking about the future. I, I'm interested in, what do you think the future of, of theater and performance is, uh, or where do you want it to go? And maybe what do you, where, where do you want to be in it? Where do, you, where do you see yourself and where do you see the industry in the future? Oh, okay, I, I'll go. Um, well, I have been doing online theater for the past year and it surprised me that actually it works. I don't know, when I turn off the computer, I feel I have been in a theater because it's happening right here right now and um, for me if we have to do online theater because of COVID for a long time now I want to have that sensation and I want still to have that feeling of sharing in the, right now at this moment so these platforms like Zoom and all these they work quite quite well to do this but for me I wouldn't like to, to, to keep doing pre-recorded theater if I have to do online theater, it has to be right here, right now. And I hope to to keep creating clown, clown I don't know, clown gave, I discovered clown at Manview and for me is the way I love, to, is the way I feel more grateful. So I would try to keep doing 
fun and hopefully live. But if not, yeah, online is fine, <laughs> let's say. Yeah, it's curious what you said, Joe, about like a memory of a memory. I think for me, Shaken is now like that, that exactly. This recording is a memory of the memories I talk about. Uh, so obviously I, I would prefer to do it with an audience and for it to be live because I think it's a, I have grown a lot. As a, as a person and as a creative since the like I recorded Shaken but not talking about Malview I know I've, I've grown like it's been two years my god <laughs> but uh, since that recording I know I have a lot of more like knowledge about how people responded about myself about my country so I wouldn't perform it the same way I did on November but right now So um, I would obviously prefer to do it live and in a theater, but I'm really excited about, about this new online platform media thing that's going on because it gives us a chance to, to show the work to people from all over the world and to share it with a broader audience. I think both Spain and Mexico have this, problem of concentrating the the industry and theater industry specifically in 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 a specific city in Spain is Madrid and in Mexico is Mexico City so the access other states have to theater is well a lot less so maybe this is the answer to people um, being able to watch more theater and quality theater um, because what what um, this is particular in Mexico but what the productions that travel to other states are big productions uh, maybe musicals maybe comedy shows maybe um, a place that that have famous people in the in the cast so independent theater is not known outside of Mexico City well <laughs> there's not a lot of people that go to the theater anyways but uh, you know like it's just a great tool to keep um keep the audience interested in this kind of kind of offering a new way of of yeah of showing new content and giving an opportunity to new artists I don't know I'm excited about it I think for me it has been a blessing I can I can honestly say that it works that people do connect with you that they do have an experience similar to going to the theater um it's just yeah if i would keep doing it but of course i, I as gracia i want to do it live well i've, I've already have the translation of shaken ah, so let's see what happens great i think um It's really nice. I think that's a really nice place to end on a kind of hopeful note that actually as much as the, yeah, as much as there's many difficulties and challenges, actually there's a kind of hopeful future in terms of access, in terms of what we might be able to do with our work and all of those things. Um, I wanted to thank you both for coming and taking the time to talk to me today and for being so kind of candid and honest about your working processes and about the kind of You know, and also for taking the time to talk through some really difficult and complex topics, because I think actually talking through difficulty and working through difficulty is a really important part of what it means to grow and develop. Um, so um, that's everything I've got that I wanted to ask. I just want to say thank you so much for coming along and chatting, and I hope to see you both soon.